you do? Taking Me Back by Jack White. Man, I've been wanting to do this since uh, the first day I heard it, uh, especially because my son, Ike, has been on me constantly about doing this song. <laughs> I promised him I'd pay him $100 if I didn't have it done by last weekend, so I owe him 100 bucks. I don't know how that worked out. Uh, then the other thing is uh, he told me if I didn't have it done by tonight that the next song I did by the White Stripes would have to be Conquest, and he knows that's my least favorite song by the White Stripes. So, <laughs> so to save my sanity and not even $100, I've already lost that. Uh, I got to get this song done. It's a complicated song. There's a lot to it. Uh, what I do like is everything he does, he does at least twice. So if you learn it once, you've learned uh, half of the times he does it. So uh, it's in drop D. At least that's how I have learned to play it. Drop D because there's a couple of times when that note comes in handy. So uh, one of the ways that it comes in handy is that you can play those power chords and slide with just one finger instead of having to use both and moving those up and down the fret. Not that you couldn't do that. You want to use standard tuning, you certainly can, but the drop D just makes it a little bit easier for me. So we're gonna go on the seventh fret, which used to be a B, but because of drop D tuning, the seventh fret is now an A. All the, all the notes get shifted up uh, two frets when you drop it down like that. So uh, it's gonna start on the A, and you can either hammer on to the uh, ninth fret so from seven to nine or slide up. And then you're gonna slide down. I even, when I hit that ninth fret, I, I give it just a little, little bit of a pull to take it a little bit higher. Not, not too discernible, but just, so I just kind of give it a little bit of a pull and then I slide down. At least that's what I'm hearing in the song. That's a, a G, which is now the fifth fret, and back up to that A, which is the seventh fret. So just those three spots, uh, you're going to be seven, nine, five, seven, okay? And those notes are A to B, and then G back to A. click the string sometimes when I'm playing, but that's just more keep me keeping time than it is in the song. It's pretty clean in the song. There's not that clicking, but... So that's the main uh, rhythm through the whole song. Now here are a few adjustments that he does uh, throughout it. So same basic structure, but just maybe hits them a little bit differently. And one of them is he skips that very first A note. So instead of it'll start and just go, does that make sense? So it leaves off that A note uh, the very first time through. Another thing is uh, he'll hit that G, which is the fifth fret. He'll hit it and chop it off a couple of times. Uh, and the drums do the same thing. Another thing that's a little bit different is sometimes he'll go. So he's kind of double hitting it. Uh, again, just in real rapid succession there before he goes back up to that A. And then there's also one time it is during, let me think if I can remember what it is behind. It's behind one of the solos or, you know, one of the, the uh, more exotic sounds. And he does this. Okay, that's where he's just going. Uh, so instead of a single note on that B, he hits that B twice, then goes down to the G twice, and then resolves it on the A. Okay, I think that might be it on uh, the variations of that main rhythm. Let's go to the, well, that. how about that screamer note? I'm just up there on a, that would be an E note, and I'm playing that on the G string, that would be what, the 17th fret. And you can treat it, and by the way, I just have some distortion on, 
Here's what it sounds like with my Pog, which is an octave generator, and I think, you know, he's got more treatment in this song than just about any, reminiscent of some of the songs on uh, uh, Boarding House, not Boarding House Reach, yeah, Boarding House Reach. Uh, a little bit of Lazaretto, a little Boarding House Reach, but a little cleaner than, than uh, the Reach songs. See, I've got my Pog on, which is giving a low, I've got all three set at noon, which is the dry signal the uh, sub octave and the up octave. I've got them all at noon. So it sounds like three strings are being played at the same time. Doesn't that sound pretty? So there's that uh, E note stretched up. And he does it a, a few different ways, but hits that probably three or four times throughout the song. A couple of times it's very perceptible, then another time it's a little bit hidden in some of the other noise that's going on. To stretch that up, and then he also does it one time where he goes down to the uh, uh, 15th fret and slides down. So hit that 15th, kind of bend it up, and then he just slides down uh, to silence. Okay, let's go to the first bridge, which sounds something like this. And so that's where the drop D really comes in handy, in that low open uh, D note. So I'm on the, uh, the B note, which is, you may recall, the 7th fret. And so here's how I play it. So I go from the, did I say 7th? That's the ninth fret. 9 to 6. That's uh, nine, six, nine, open, seven, seven of the A. So it's all on that top string except that very last note. And then he duplicates that with the exception of the very last note, which is going to that E note, which is the seventh fret of the A string. He goes back to the B, which is the ninth fret of the E string. So I'll do the, the series one time here. he goes into that B, uh, it's, it's going back to the main rhythm, the, the main ri uh, riff. Okay, that part's uh, fun to play. I, I enjoy that part. Okay, let's go to another bridge. How about this one? Sounds uh, something like this. Now, just bear in mind, I'm not a super fast player. There's a couple of parts of this song that I simply can't play. I can play it slowly, but I can't play it along with the song unless I crank the uh, tempo way down. So, uh, but this part is uh, pretty easy to do. I think you can do this one. And that is... Uh, so, that is a uh, fifth fret of the A string. Now, you can also play that up here on the E string. I'll get to that in just a second. But you can play it on the A string, fifth fret, up to the seventh. And you just instantly hammer it on. So you kind of sh strike it on that fifth. But almost simultaneously, you hammer on to the uh, seventh. You do that a couple of times. So I'm hitting it a uh, first time or two with the pick. And then after that, I just hammer my finger on. And then I stretch down that 7th fret. Okay, does that sound uh, good to you? So you can also do that up here, the exact same notes, which would be D and E. This is an open D tuning, so now the E string 12th fret, guess what note that is? That's a D. And you're going to hammer on instantly to the 14th fret. Now, I, 
I've got a, a, a whammy pedal, so I can jam that up an octave. <laughs> have a little bit more control down here on the A string. Okay, um, so that part's uh, pretty easy to play, a little bit tricky. Um, and then it goes to the next bridge. And by the way, uh, what is nice about playing it up here on the E string is it's easier to transition into the next section of the song. You can do it either way. You can transition from here or from here. You know, I just have a little harder time stretching that note up there and making it sound clean. Um, so here's the next part of the song. It goes... to play it up on the top two strings and if you can do that it starts way up here on the 14th fret which is an E and you're gonna slide down to the B which is the ninth fret and then it resolves on that A which is the seventh fret okay I'll do that one more time and then he starts at the same spot to the G, slides down and then twice on the G, which is the fifth fret. And I'm hitting two strings. I'm hitting the uh, uh, 14th fret, the E string, and the A string. Now you start on the 12th fret, which is the D note, and then you just slide down to the 7th fret. You can choose whether or not to hit it or just to kind of uh, suggest that note. That's uh, pretty close to the song. Uh, let's see what's after that. My goodness, this song's got a lot of layers. I'm going to have to check my notes. So here's another section of the song. This one is a tricky part, and uh, it's kind of him going through those scales real fast. They do overlap, of course, so you can't play it exactly like that. And it's hard for me to keep up with it. In fact, I can't keep up with it in the song. Can't play fast enough. I can hit the notes, and if I slow it down, I can do it. Uh, but I just haven't practiced enough, and so that's what it's going to take to get it. So the same with you. Learn the notes and then practice until you can do it. It may seem impossible at first, but you can get there. So here's what it sounds like in my ear. Something like that. It's hard to... <laughs> you know, it's not the exact same little lead-up to every note, so just... Uh, you know, get it close. Good Lord, just get close. Here's what I'm doing. I'm hitting the open A string. Hammer on to the second fret. And then I hit the second fret of the A string and hammer on to the fifth fret. And you're just kind of climbing that ladder doing that same, same thing. Now on that is when you change strings. By the way, I've just got a fuzz pedal on right here, which is, sounds very fuzzy, this part of the song. So, when I hit that right there, the fifth fret of the A string, that's obviously the same as the next string down open, D. See, those are the same notes. So, during one of the dun 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 See, I hit, I hit it once on the A string, 5th fret, once open on the D string, and it just gives it that natural 
you know, it's not like you're changing strings. It's just like you're continuing to go da 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 So you do the same thing on the D string, second fret and then fifth fret. And then you go to the G string, but instead of second, fifth, it's second, fourth fret. Fourth fret of the G string is same as the open B string. And then you're going to go to the third fret of the B string. Open E string. Third fret of the E string, but it's an instant slide up to the seventh fret of the E string. You know what note that is? That's a B note. Normally up here on the seventh fret of the E string, the fat E string, but we've moved it up here. So there's your B. There's your B. So those are the two same notes. I like knowing what notes are being played. It helps to put structure to it. I, I don't know how to read music, and I don't know music theory like a lot of the guys on the internet do. I hope to someday when I have a little time to feed my brain, but for now, I do like knowing those notes. Oh, that, that makes sense. That's the same thing with this up he here. That E note makes sense because this is, uh, you know, E, B, and A are your strong notes in this um, in this song. So that that run is. Okay, so again, learn it and just kind of add your own flair to it. And if you got two guitars, that could you guys could take turns playing that, or just uh, learn how to play it on one and and uh, fill up the the space a little bit. So the the rhythm behind that is a little bit different. It does it, of course, just the guitar a couple of times, I think, and then the rhythm comes in, and I think it is just this. It's just an E to D. So that's the rhythm behind that part of the song, and then, so here's the structure of it. He does it for two... Uh, bars with no background music and then he does it for five bars like this and then the final eighth bar he does this okay so that is starting on that E so it'll the transition will be like this go from the 2nd fret to the 5th fret, 7th fret, ninth fret, and then he hits that 10th uh, fret. It's the only time he hits that note, that note right there, uh, the 10th fret, which would of course be a C. And then he goes back into the regular uh, rhythm, riff. I bet you do. So the, the part after that as, ascending uh, beat, and then it goes back into the main rhythm, there's just kind of a, and, and I'm not going to get too bogged down on some of these sounds that are so treated, but it basically just sounds like he's hitting an A chord. I, I've got my tremolo pedal on, <laughs> I've got my wah pedal I'm using, and then a little bit of distortion, and it's just sort of like... <laughs> It doesn't sound exactly like that, but so I'm just, you know, activating my wah pedal with a fast rate on my tremolo, and you know that just sounds like something. So if you're interested in in replicating all of those sounds, you know, first of all, you'll need quite a few pedals, and secondly, you'll need a couple of guitarists. Uh, to play this song. I mean, there's a lot of music going on in this song. So anyway, that's that's kind of what I'm hearing. Which you can do it, you know, if you're doing it live, just have fun with it. And uh, it'll sound pretty good.
Okay, the, the part after that is, um, I kind of call this rapid fire. He goes, uh... <laughs> And then it changes, you know, he shifts a pedal or something, and it sounds real, uh... I don't know, I just didn't have enough time to try to duplicate all those sounds, but I think I got the notes. So you're going to go D string open to second fret, hit it a couple of times. Hit the second fret again before you go to the open G string second fret of the G string open G string second fret of the D string a couple times D string second fret again open and then second fret of the A string that goes pretty quick because he does it I think a total of eight times but it, it's just such a short little I think he may only do it four times actually okay and then the solo at the end let me see if I can figure that out let me listen to it so the solo sounds something like this I'm on the B string 15 and 17th fret and I'm bending the 17th fret resolve down to the 12th fret so I'm going bending up to 17 and then kind of relax it pull it off to make a tone on that 15th fret and then I hit it again with the pick resolve it on 12 first time he does that he goes 12 on the B to uh, 10 on the E back to 12 on the B back to 10 on the E and by the way I say this in different videos and sometimes I forget to say it you know never just hit a note <laughs> you know I mean, stretch it, bend it, wobble it, whatever. You got to give that note some attitude for it to sound good. Um, and the more, you know, when you're first learning it, just learn where to put your finger. and Just practice it until you can put your finger where it goes. And then start doing something with your finger. Start uh, wiggling it and giving it that vibrato that it wants. So... And then... Uh, down does the same thing again up here and then that time he just goes uh, he doesn't hit that B string that one extra time he just hits the B to the E 10 a couple times and then back to the B resolves it on that 12th 12 of the B Oh, let's see. What else? Oh, then the wonky notes. Yeah, this one confuses my brains. Gives me nightmares. So I'm going to have to listen to that part again. Okay. Now the, uh, I call it the wonky part at the end, where it sounds like he's got some serious treatment going on. I've got my pog on and my whammy pedal. So if you don't have those two pedals, you're going to have to come up with something else to make it sound this way. But here's what I've got. Is that close enough for you? Because <laughs> that's as close as I'm going to get it until somebody shows me better. So I'm on the 15th fret of the E string. 15th fret of the B string. 14th fret of the G string. 
and then I go to the 10 on the E, bend the 11 on the B, and land on the 10 on the G. So, and then you go back to the 10 on the E, uh, to the uh, 13 on the B. So 10 on the E, 13 on the B, resolves on the um, 11 G. And then you do that one more time, but go down to the 10 on the G. I think. Yep. I think that's it. <laughs> so uh, if you have any suggestions on that, let me know. But again, I've got my pog on with a, a sub octave and a dry signal in the up octave. And then I've got my whammy that's shooting everything up another whole octave. And I've got some distortion on it. And uh, that's that. Now, the very last thing is that last lick right before the end of the song. Let me listen to that, and I'll be back with you. Okay, the last little solo the, for the last few seconds of the song sounds something like this. <laughs> So I am on the G string, 12 and 14th frets. Start on the 14th. I got my wah pedal going. And a fuzz pedal and a little bit of an overdrive. And, and you know, again, it, it seems like it's it's got so much treatment and, and the notes kind of cut out a little bit. It's got that raspy sound. So. So I'm just going, bending up the 14 on the G, clicking my finger off to the 12, and resolving on the 14 of the uh, D string. So you should be able to listen to me do that without me having to explain everything. Uh, if I do, this song's probably over your head. It's over my head, so... And uh, just kind of, and uh, <laughs> I could do it. This song's worn me out. I tell you what, just listening to it and trying to play it and listen to it and listen to it, and now trying to do the video. This is almost as much work as Ball and Biscuit was. This one was uh, so many layers and treatments and so forth, and hard to figure out what noise he's making. But boy, it's beautiful noise. So that's it. Sorry I've been gone so long. Uh, like I say, life's been in the way. Ike, I hope you're happy. I finally got this uh, video done. Uh, I hope you take me back. Pun intended. So that's it, my friends. I uh, finally got her done. I hope you like it. Please give me a thumbs up if you do, because uh, I worked my butt off on this one. <laughs> Easy chair. Catch you next time.